Okay, so I am giving a Christian perspective of what I see going on today in the world. Um, we are living in truly crazy times, and as the church, we are called by Jesus to analyze it and figure out what's going on. It's in Luke. He says, you see the signs in the sky, but you can't analyze the present time. Well, as a church, I want you to know I'm going to look at the spiritual powers behind what's going on, and I'm going to analyze what he's doing. Back in the 50s, President Dwight Eisenhower said, quote, without God, there could be no American form of government, nor any American way of life. Recognition of a supreme being is the first and the most basic expression of Americanism. Thus the Founding Fathers saw it, and thus, with God's help, it will continue to be. Now, 60 years later, President Obama said, Although, as I mentioned, we have a very large Christian population, we do not consider ourselves a Christian nation or a Jewish nation. Uh, that's problematic. I've always been led to believe that our country was founded on Judeo-Christian ethics. At which point I googled, what are Judeo-Christian ethics? And there were things all over the map. So I just made up my own definition. It must have something to do with a higher power that we're accountable to. Something about love thy neighbor, personal responsibility, work ethic. Something about speaking the truth, uh, which builds trust. There's something about gratitude instead of an attitude of entitlement. And our judicial system is definitely based on the Ten Commandments. I've, I've always understood the government was there to provide protection for the people from enemies, foreign and domestic. So my outline is real simple. Number one, Satan is alive and well. He is the prince of the power of the air, and he's wreaking havoc in our society. Number two, God is still in control. And number three, how should we live in light of this chaos? So first I want to look at the tool bag that Satan has. Jesus tells us, that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And Peter tells us to be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So Satan's tool bag is small, but it's predictable. It doesn't change. He's very cunning, very crafty. He's a master at manipulation. He likes to control people. He uses lies and deception, which leads to blindness. He uses fear, big time. He uses fear, which leads us to not be able to think straight and to make good decisions. He uses slavery and bondage to sin. He finds human weaknesses and he capitalizes on them, whether it's greed or power, materialism. He uses hate and division, death, disease, and destruction. So I've been watching the news and I, and I see the cancel culture movement and, and I see what they're doing in Oregon, I see what they're doing in other major cities and they're tearing down everything. But at the same time, I was reading the book of Nehemiah. Now Nehemiah happened about 400 years before Christ and Nehemiah was charged by God to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Ezra had come back and he built the temple, but it wasn't going well. So uh, Nehemiah's back and, and I see him saying, remember your history. Do not forget the faithfulness of God. And uh, I, I see our history being torn down. Our faithful servants having their statues ripped down. I see, instead of rebuilding the city and rebuilding the walls, I see cities being burned and looted. Now, a wall 
in the Old Testament would be like the police that we have to protect the people in the community. Well, let's defund the police. I see the churches being burned. I see statue of Jesus being torn down. I see Bibles being burned. Well, in Nehemiah, he helped Ezra get the church services and the worship services back started again. And they were to remember their blessing. He writes down that um, there was deep remorse, there was repentance, and the people sought the Lord. Well, what I see now is well, let's blame everybody else, and they have no intention of looking to God. I see families and marriages being torn down, and that is the foundation for any society. You know, God gave ten big laws, right? The Ten Commandments. Well, two of them are based on the family. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Children, honor thy father and thy mother. God knew that if the family was strong, that the basis of the community would be strong. I see our educational system in shambles. I see revisionist history. How can we remember what we were never taught? You have to look for yourself and find out these lessons because we will repeat the lessons of the past if we if we don't learn from them. I'm afraid children are being taught what to think and not how to think. And this is not good. We have huge economic uncertainties, whether it's inflation, which I look at as a hidden tax. What I look at is the government stealing money from the people. I see fractional banking, which is causing a huge debt bubble. I see currency backed by Mm, nothing by trust. It's not gold, it's not silver, it's just like well trust. I see a retirement program that has no money in it. So I've invested my money for all these years and now there's no money. Either that's a hidden tax or somebody's stealing from me or it's a pyramid scheme. But it's not good. I look at redistribution, which is really using the government to steal from somebody else to give to someone else. That That's n not good. The Bible's pretty clear, thou shalt not steal, and, and it gives people a plot of land. It believes in private ownership, and then it, there's punishment for moving the boundary lines. Then I see the government corruption. There's, there's some interesting things in Isaiah chapter 1. In uh, verse 22, it says, Your silver has become dross and your wine is mixed with water. That's what inflation is. That's diluted when, uh, when our money system gets diluted. And God hates that. And then the next verse, verse 23, it says, Your princes, well, that's like our congressmen, are rebellious and companions of thieves. Well, that's like the central banking system. And everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. And God does not approve of the government corruption. Another thing that Satan uses is control and manipulation. He's manipulating people through division and hate. We're seeing that everywhere. He manipulates people through lies and deception. First Peter tells us he is he, the devil, does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. When you have lies, confusion, distrust, you, you, you can't trust one another, and it's not a, any way to build a country. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We need to get back to that truth. So I want to tell you a few things. Um, when you hear someone say fake news or conspiracy theory, I just want you to stop and I want you to know somebody is lying. <laughs> I'm not telling you who, but I want you to know for sure. Someone is lying. Someone has got a narrative that they want you to believe. And you need to figure out what the truth is. 
A trick that, that the media uses is they release information late on a Friday night. And you kind of hear the headline, but it's never truly reported on. It's an inconvenient truth. It's rela released. And then by Monday, oh, well, that's old news. Yeah, I heard something about that. And, and the truth never really gets out to see the light of day. And they can cover it up with Monday's news. So watch out for the word narrative. The problem with narrative is, well, I have my narrative and you have yours. Yeah, but what's the truth? We, we need to get to the truth. The media cannot be trusted to speak the truth or even to show the whole picture so that we can decide what the truth is for ourselves. And there is a huge amount of manipulation through fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. We can only make good decisions if we are, are have, have a clear mind and if we are living in fear, we do not have a clear mind. Bottom line is control. Satan wants to control you. He wants to control the world. Satan wants to put his narrative out there into the hearts and the minds of the people. What's the answer? God's truth. Um, globalism, one world. <laughs> Satan is using death, disease, and destruction. Um, do I believe that this sickness was a planned event? Yeah, Satan planned it. Do you know the biggest migration of people in the world today? The biggest social event that people fly in from all over the world to attend. Sure enough, it's the Chinese New Year celebrated in Wuhan, China. Lasts, I don't know, more than a week. And um, so the virus was released sometime in October. Enough people got it. And then there were enough people to spread it at this very huge festival. From all over the world, people flew back to their country and spread this pandemic. So. For more information on that, I, I suggest you go to and watch um, a couple YouTube um, shows, videos. Um, the Great Reset, Davos, and the plot to cancel Trump, that's one. And the second one is put out by Joe M. And you type in Q, plan to save the world. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one is death and destruction. We saw our elderly dying for no reason. And for years now, we've watched the preborn being murdered. Satan is definitely behind that. Idolatry. I, I know we don't have a little statue in the corner, but we still have idolatry big time. We have materialism. We have, well, Satan worship in all its various forms. We have substance abuse. We have human trafficking. Addictive behavior, idolatry, never is satisfied, and it's progressive. It just keeps getting worse and asking more and more of us. Um, I, I, I just am horrified by what is happening to our children. Unfortunately, in society today, we have soft porn everywhere. It's just the water that we swim in, as they say. And and it, it's progressive. It gets worse and worse. And some people end up in children's pornography. And that's, that's horrid. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and manna. The answer to idolatry is Jesus. Each of us have a God-shaped hole in our heart. And we try to put things in there to fill up that hole, and it does not work. And the answer is we keep putting more in, and that does not work. But if we will repent, turn from our sins, and ask Jesus come in and be our Lord and our Savior, he will do that. And we will learn to walk with him, and he will fill up that emptiness that is inside of us. 
I see slavery and bondage. I, I, you know, there's a lot of it, but I'd like to talk especially about debt because um, debt ruins marriages, ruins families, and we teach our children at a very young age the way to go to college is to go into debt. We teach children, this is fine, go into debt and you can pay it off when you get a job. Oh yeah, run up your credit card debt, it's okay. And they get used to living in debt and paying the minimum payment. And it's just a horrible debt cycle that makes life much harder. And, um, and you know, my, my age group, we're, we're starting to retire going, gee, and maybe I didn't put enough away into retirement. Well, in another generation, they're going to retire with their college debt still intact, and that scares me to death. So we need to get rid of this entitlement attitude that, well, I deserve this now, and I'll go out and put it on credit. No, that's not the way it is. Here's the truth from Proverbs 22. The borrower becomes the lender's slave. This is bondage. This is slavery. Okay, this is true with individuals, and this is true with countries as well. I want you to know that the entertainment industry is um, run by Satan. I do not have time to go into it, but there is something on the Internet I'd, I'd like you to, to go and watch. It's a documentary by Mike Smith. He was a stunt man, and he was a big part of Hollywood. And he put together Out of Shadows. If you type in Out of the Shadows, you will get to an awful movie. So don't do that. <laughs> Out of Shadows by Mike Smith. And it's a very well done documentary. The answer to slavery and bondage is Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. That is the answer to bondage. Jesus will set you free, but you need to be in his word, in relationship with him. And now the good news. God is still on the throne. Do we have a chance? Yes. And it's, and it's God. He is sovereign. He knows everything. He sees everything. He is gracious and kind. Is he letting us suffer the consequences of our own bad decisions? Yes. Is he shaking the world? so that we turn to him? Yes. But Satan cannot do anything without God giving him permission. We see that in the book of Job. This world is temporary, and the life that God has for us is eternal. He is a loving father, allowing his children to suffer consequences so that they can be restored to him and to walk with him. Have things ever been this bad before? Yeah. Yeah, they've been a lot worse. Imagine being a Jew in the Second World War. There's, there's horrible things that have happened in the world. This is just the worst that's happened in our lifetime. Stop asking, why me? And ask yourself, why have we been so blessed for so many years? This life is not about you. My life is not about me. This life is, well, history is his story. And it has a beginning, and it will have an end when Jesus comes back. And it is progressing. And God is just trying to get our attention. But God is love, and he's there for you if you will turn to him. So part three, how should we live in light of this mess? Number one, we have to stop the fear. Number one, stop the fear. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know how many times the Bible says, fear not, or be not afraid? 365 times. So obviously he was trying to get through to us. Joshua was ready to go into the promised land, and God said, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. 
for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Is God going to stop the bad stuff? No, but he's going to walk with us through it. How are we to live? Worship God. Find your peace and your security in him. Live in the freedom that grace affords us. And don't be in bondage to sin or fear. Walk in the truth. The only way you're going to find the truth is to walk with Jesus. Personally, have a relationship with Jesus. Read your Bible, pray, and go to a good Bible teaching church. This will counteract Satan's lie. This will answer their fear. Abide in Christ's love. Don't buy into hatred and division. Walk in the Spirit. Live as a child of the King and put on the whole armor of God. Get more on that in Galatians chapter 6. I do want you to pray. I want you to pray for revival, starting with yourself, starting with the churches into America and the rest of the world. Pray for our families. We need strong marriages and protection for our children. Pray for the government leaders that they come in contact and have an encounter with the God of the universe and pray for truth to be revealed. I just want to give you a couple more websites where I get my information. I have found them very helpful. Eric Metaxas, M-E-T-A-X-A-S, has a YouTube uh, show, whatever it's called. Um, the Hoover Institute puts out Uncommon Knowledge. Uh, Brian Sussman has Hidden Headlines, Faith, Family, and Freedom. He has a podcast. And Black Conservative Patriot. He has a show every day, just kind of keeps me up on what's going on. Now, in closing, do not be manipulated by fear. Again, <laughs> stop the narrative and find the truth in Jesus. Nothing can keep us from Jesus but ourselves. So let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that in this ever-changing world, you do not change. Thank you that you are ever with us and that you live inside of us and forgive us of our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy, the hope, the peace and security that is always available to us. Help us to walk in it. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross to set us free from sin and death. Thank you, Jesus, that you are able to change our hearts and free our minds from fear and worry. Thank you, Jesus that you never stop loving us. I ask that you bring revival. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.